Now, in your exam, what are the other things they will expect you to know about Allah nerve in the hand? What are the functions of Allah nerve in the hand? Um, JP, what are the functions of Allah nerve in the hand? What are the things you, you can ask a patient to do to check for Allah nerve in darkness? Reflection of the medial two digits. Okay, so you can ask them to make a fist. Fine, that may be lost. What else? Very good. So sorry, uh, 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 spreading the fingers. So that is abduction of the fingers and abduction of the fingers as well as scissoring. Okay? Then abduction of the thumb and then abduction of the little finger. This one. All these are for Allah nerve injury. So if you have somebody with an Allah nerve injury, now spread your fingers for me, please. Very good. And push, touch my pen with the, th uh, the little finger. Yes, yes. So that is lost in Allah nerve injury. And that's, uh, then you do the Froman sign, uh, which is um, giving a card between the thumb and the index finger. Put it, put it between the thumb and the index finger. Okay, keep it down. Okay, um, and then you pull the card out. So if the patient has got an ulnar nerve injury, the adductor pollicis is affected and the patient will be unable to hold the card, uh, uh, and, but they will try to hold the card by flexing the IP joint. So that's your, pull it out now, leave it, leave it, yeah. So if the finger, finger is in that position, that's a positive Froman sign, okay? That's a classical of ulnar nerve injury and you're testing for adductor pollicis. Okay, back to you. What's the mechanism of claw hand? So if it's a distal, if it's a proximal injury, you get claw hand. If it's distal, you don't because you've got a compensation. So it's because if it's a proximal injury, you get an opposed. Uh, well, um, maybe I, I, I should just correct you there. You will get claw hand in both, both in. Uh, a high lesion as well as low lesion, you'll get a claw hand, but there's a difference. Um, wait, what, what's the principle behind claw hand? What's claw hand? How, show me how does claw hand look? No. <laughs> uh, no. How do you know that? How do you distinguish a claw hand from Dupuytren's or, or a contracture or a Walkman's contracture? It's okay, no, just by looking at it. In a claw hand, the classical feature is hyperextension of the MCP joint and flexion of the IP joint. So this is claw hand, where the, your, these two joints have to be hyperextended. And that, that's claw hand. Because if you get this, that's that you get in a number of conditions. You can get in Dupuytren's, burn contracture, Volkmann's contracture, et cetera. But you, in a claw hand, that's, that's claw hand, okay? So that brings us to the muscles in the hand you, to understand claw hand, you need to understand action of muscles. I said this action, abduction of the uh, fingers, that is by what in draw shape? Palmar or dorsal? Palmar. Dorsal, dab. Dab is pad and dab, isn't it? Pad, dab. Dab is dorsal in draw shape. So dorsal in draw shape abducts, palmar in draw shape adducts. So there are four and four, so eight muscles, okay? Then you have four hypothenar muscles. Sorry. Okay. Four hypothenar muscles, four thinar muscles. So that's 16. And finally, your lumbricals. Okay? You can sit down, uh, Johnny, now. What is the action of lumbricals? This is the action of lumbricals. So that's when you, when you put somebody on a plaster cast, you put them in this position. Because the, in, in your normal resting position of the hand, the lumbricals will help in flexion of the MCP and extension of the interphalangeal joints. That's the lumbrical action. Okay. Now, spread your fingers. That's all ulnar nerve. Bring it together. All ulnar nerve. Do this. Lumbrical. What about that? Which nerve is this? Radial. Extension should be radial. No, this, this action. So it can be the Very good, yes. Yeah, so this is 
these two are by ulnar and these two are by median okay so i will explain that bit of anatomy now in the hand we discuss about 20 muscles four thenar four hypothenar um, four palmar interosseae four dorsal interosseae and four lumbricals all these are supplied by the ulnar nerve except those on the uh, medial uh, radial side which are called the loaf muscles so the loaf is supplied by the ulnar nerve uh, sorry median nerve l stands for lateral two lumbricals open pollicis abductor pollicis brevis and flexor pollicis brevis these four are supplied well these four means these five the lateral two lumbricals open and pollicis abductor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis these are supplied by the median nerve everything else is by ulnar so these two are by this action these two are by median these two are by ulnar so what happens if you have an ulnar nerve injury these two are spared so that's why you get the clawing so what happens in clawing if you have your hand in this position when you have a nerve injury the opposite of that happens so the opposite will be hyperextension of the mcp and flexion of the interphalangeal joint if these two are not affected you'll get clawing only in those two okay so th this is your claw hand now what you said was high lesion and low lesion if you have a high ulnar nerve injury then these two fdps are also affected aren't they because the fdp is supplied by the ulnar nerve quite higher up here so your clawing will be less because though they are also affected the the hand is clawed less but if it is a low injury this nerve is intact so it is pulling it more okay so that's your ulnar nerve paradox if you have a high lesion the clawing is less if you have a low lesion here the clawing is more okay so that's your ulnar nerve injury ulnar nerve paradox so if you got anything related to these in your emqs usually high lesion low lesion they like high lesion for ulnar nerve and and radial nerve because it's got quite a bit of clinical significance um did you understand the clawing concept okay and the high lesion the low lesion okay so that's all you need to know about the hand at this level you don't have to know about the uh, arches you don't have to know about the pulley system uh, or, or the um, uh, the other detail anatomy if you want to ask me anything at this point of what you have revised in another you know, mcqs if you want to ask me anything at this point i can i can answer you I, but i'm not going into any more detailed hand anatomy because that will be a bit too much for you ha, is anybody want to know about police no i don't think so uh, you need to know where the origin uh, where is the insertion of the uh, fdp and fds where does the fdp insert flexor digitorum profundus insert base of the distal phalanx and the fds so, uh, no because the, the fds has got two um, two strands coming off so the fdp and fds comes here fds splits into two is called the campus chiasma and it's attached to the sides of the middle phalanx the fdp <coughs> comes through the middle and attaches to the where is the distal phalanx oh, that's your fdp and fds origin and uh, the uh, insertion okay okay the last bit here is the carpal tunnel extremely important um attachments of the flexor retinaculum do you want to say that attachments yeah it's okay no worries anyone attachments of the flexor retinaculum scaphoid scaphoid on on the radial side okay uh, trapezium trapezium pisiform and what's the bone you feel here in your hand 
Oh no, Hamid. Hi, hook of Hamid. Okay, something like the flexor retinaculum, you have to be, uh, you know, you need to know the uh, attachments because it's um, quite an important thing in the exam. So this is your flexor retinaculum. Your uh, Johnny, just stand up for a minute. The proximal part of your flexor retinaculum is that your distal wrist crease. If you see your distal wrist crease in your hand, that is the proximal part of the retinaculum. Then if you ask the patient to extend the thumb fully, extend it fully, then the ulnar border of the thumb forms a distal part of the retinaculum. Got it? You extend it fully, then identify the ulnar border of the thumb. That's your distal part of the retinaculum. So this is your retinaculum. So attached here, the attachment is a tubercle of the scaphoid. Just remember that the, the carpal bones are in, in, in a uh, convex, uh, the, sorry, concave shape, such that the retinaculum does not attach to the entire bone, it just attached to specific points. So on the scaphoid, it's called the tubercle of the scaphoid. Pisiform, the pisiform is a small bone, so it attaches to the pisiform. Here it is a hook of the hamid, not the entire hamid, hook of the hamid, and here it's a ridge of the trapezium. So this is where the attachment is, okay? So if you feel the bony prominence here, that is your hook of hamid. Okay, structures going under the retinaculum, it's very important, so you have the median nerve, then you have the FDP and the FDS to these fingers, so nine of the, see eight of them, and the FPL. So 10 structures. So 10 structures go under the retinaculum, and what goes over the retinaculum? Anyone? You know what, the flexor copy ulnar is, uh, what did you say, is that what you're saying, or radial is? No. They, you know, some of the books do say that, but it's not strictly accurate. The flexor copy radialis does not go under or over the retinaculum because it just attaches to the base of the second metacarpal. So it is not anything to do with the retinaculum. Some, some, yeah, palmaris long as go, goes over the retinaculum. What else? Ulnar nerve, ulnar artery, anything else? If you have a patient coming with carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, what, what is the classical feature? They'll have tingling and numbness in the lateral three digits, right? Okay. If you test for sensation, can that be affected? It can be. But what about sensation here? Can it be affected? Why not? No, here. It's a branch. Yeah. Which comes off before the That's right. Okay, so the, um, that's your median nerve. Approximately five centimeters from the before the wrist crease, there is some a branch called the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, which supplies the thena remnants. So if you have a patient with carpal tunnel, because this is running over the retinaculum, that area is spared. However, after you operate and see them post-operatively, you need to test this. Because if that is lost, then you have iatrogenically damaged the palmar cutaneous branch. Okay? Okay, what else runs over the retinaculum? The radial artery. The radial artery comes, in, uh, comes here just lateral to your FCR tendon. Mm -hmm. Then the deep branch goes to the snuff box. And then it comes out through the uh, thinner remnants to form the palmar arch. But you have a superficial branch which goes over the retinaculum and anastomosis with the ulnar artery on the other side to form the other part of the palmar arch. So essentially you have a superficial branch of the radial artery, palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, palmar is longus, ulnar nerve, ulnar artery. So these are all structures going over the retinaculum. Okay. Thank you, you can sit, Johnny. Okay, so we have covered the entire upper limb on this. Couple of nerves we haven't covered. One is a long thoracic nerve, which comes from C5, C6, and C7. So 
So root value C5, C6, C7. It lies in the mid axillary line in the chest or, or the thorax and it can be damaged when you put a chest strain or do any surgery in the um, axillary region. So that's long thoracic. There are a couple of small nerves just for completion. You have the nerve to subclavius from there and the nerve to rhomboid. But I don't think you need to know for the part A. You just need to, if at all you're asked, you just need to get, get in your head that it has nothing to do with the cords. It is just an isolated nerve coming off the root. Nerve to subclavius and the nerve to uh, rhomboid. Okay. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.